In this video, we're going to talk about setting up multiple try catches. We're also going to introduce another type of exception that we're going to capture. And we're also going to talk about a generic exception handler. So several topics to cover. Now you can see here was the original code from the last lecture that we worked on. We had our try and our catch. And of course we had this array and we tried to print out an element that was not in this array. Now you can see right down here below the catch, I've set up some new code. And what we're going to do in this lecture is create an arithmetic exception. And that is another very common exception that you can get in both Java and C Sharp. Now, a really good way to quickly create an arithmetic exception is to divide by zero. So you can see that's what I've done here. I create this variable and we're dividing by zero. And that should throw an exception. So let's go ahead and run this so that we can ensure that the exception actually is created. So let's go ahead and run this. And there you can see we got our arithmetic exception. And we tried to divide by zero and it did not work. And of course, we also caught our first out of bounds exception up here and that's still working. So that's all good. So what we're gonna do is create another try catch block to work against this code. So let's go ahead and create our try. And of course, right after the try, we need the catch. And actually, you know, it might just be easier to go ahead and copy and paste this up here. So let's go ahead and just do that. So we'll just copy and paste here. And of course, we want this to be an arithmetic exception has occurred. So let's just put an arithmetic exception has occurred. And so you probably guessed it. The class that we want to specify here is arithmetic exception. And I misspelled it. We don't need an I right here. There we go. So let's go ahead and run this. And if everything works, we should catch this exception and we'll print out a more readable message. So let's go ahead and run this. And the exception was caught and we printed out this more readable message. So let's go ahead and close this out. Now there is also a generic type of exception bucket that you can use. And that is just exception. So if you weren't sure exactly what type of exception your code might generate, you can go ahead and just use that. So let's go ahead and get rid of the arithmetic here. And even though we're going to generate an arithmetic exception again, we probably should get rid of this and make this more of a generic exception message. So let's go ahead and rerun this and make sure it still works. And it did. So that's another type of exception class that you can specify in your argument. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this out. Now you might be asking the question, why didn't you just insert this code up in the try and then just put another catch block down here? Well, you can do that, but there actually is a difference in terms of the execution of the program. And we'll talk about that in the next lecture.